So just last month, I created a data-driven map animation tutorial. And this was a really fun project. And it, essentially, I was visualizing the 10 most populated cities in France. And I used a tool called GeoLayers. Now, this is a really powerful map plugin for Adobe After Effects. It allows you to essentially pull geospatial data from the internet and use that data in your animations. So today, I'm going to be using this plugin again for a fun little animation where I'm going to map out all of the rivers in France. If you want to check out more about GeoLayers, just follow the link in the video description. You can watch uh, the trailer and you can see all the features that it has. It's a really cool tool. If you want to pick up a copy, just please use my affiliate link in the video description. It's how I support my channel. All right, let's get into it. Once I have GeoLayers installed, I'm going to go into After Effects and go to the Window menu, Extensions, and select the GeoLayers 3 panel. Now this is a really cool panel, it's going to show me the map. I can do everything within this panel. I can add the keyframes to animate my map. I can pull all the geospatial data. First I need to create a map comp. This is right up here. I'm going to click Create Map Comp, select the button, and I'm going to call it uh, Rivers of France. I actually want to change this, make it a 4K, 3840 by 2160, seven seconds. Here I can select the different styles. I have like a satellite style, a bunch of different looks. So I'm just going to stick with this uh, simple look here. Select create. This is going to create all the necessary elements. I have my map comp, my anchor, everything I need really. And now I'm just going to go back up to the map comp here and turn off the labels. I just want to see the clean map. Now there's a bunch of features here. Um, this isn't like a standard GeoLayers tutorial. I'm just going to be focusing on what I'm doing for this particular project. So again, um, if you want to check out more gen generic tutorials on this, follow that link in the video description and the creator has a bunch of great stuff uh, on the site. So I'm going to simply grab on the map here. And as I do that, you're going to see my map and my comp uh, panel updates. So I'm going to zoom in on France. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little bit of a wide shot and then it's going to push in on France and as it does that push in I want the rivers to animate on real simple animation. I don't even want the rest of this map. I'm going to pull I'm going to pull France out and I just want like in my last animation I just want the country of France there. Now I want to pull this geospatial data from the internet. Now I can do this by clicking this button here it said as it says add features to browser. So I can do it this way or I can do a search online. You can see up here uh, there's a search online button. I can do it that way as well. But I'm going to go down here and right here it says download features. Essentially the only elements I really need are the country outline and the rivers, like the, the actual data for that. So first I'm going to go up here to countries, select that. That's going to download all of the countries in the world. If I open this up, here they are. Uh, so we've got what, like 196, something like that. So I can use this filter toolbar to type in France, hit enter, and that's going to filter uh, France as well as all of its uh, territories or whatever. Now I need to specify, um, you know, I want to create the France element as a shape layer so that I can now animate it. So what I want to do is I want to specify um, the color and the style of it. So to create a new style, I'm going to click on this. These are my styles. So these are the preset styles, all different kinds of things that have strokes, dashes. Um, but I'm going to go down here and select add style. I can specify fill or stroke. I want this to be a fill. I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to paste that hex key, or that hex code. And uh, now it's here. I'm going to rename the new style. Just call it France and click apply. Now I want to do the rivers. So I'm going to go back to styles, add new style. And I want this actually to be a stroke and not a fill because when it applies this, it's going to be like a path. So I want to be able to just control the width of that. So I'm going to hit stroke here and I'm going to turn off fill. And it says use fill color. So actually, let's change that fill color to blue. And I'm going to turn off the fill. And now you can see in the preview there that it's just the stroke. So I know that quick reference. When I'm looking at my styles, I know that that is a stroke. So the width, it's at 20 pixels now. I want to make it pretty thin because um, I'm zoomed out here on these rivers. And some of them have pretty tight curves on them. So I want to make sure that, um, that it stays at a nice kind of thin width. I'm going to go to like 5 pixels. That might be too thin. And actually, if I go back to the styles here, there's a few other added attributes. So I, uh, the three main ones are simplified geometry, which allows me to specify how much detail are going to be in some of these elements. Um, if you simplify it, 
it kind of maximizes the performance of your computer so it's not going to bog things down too much. Auto stroke width, that's when I apply those rivers. If I have auto stroke width, if I'm animating in on it, those, um, those rivers are going to stay the same width. So it'll have an expression applied. So it's going to auto um, restroke, or restroke. It's going to auto uh, change the width. If I don't select that, when I apply the, or I draw the actual feature, it's going to stay at that width. So if I zoom out or zoom in, it's going to um, change the, the size accordingly. Also, if I apply, um, let's say I pull a data set of a river that ha actually has multiple pieces, um, I can have it import as individual layers. If I don't have that selected, it's going to create one shape element, and all of those pieces are going to be shape elements in one shape layer. So it really depends on your, your workflow that you want to do. So if you want to have um, effects that you apply to individual layers, you want to work at a layer level, or if you want to apply things in a group of shape elements, then you want to work at that level. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of up to you. I'm going to leave that deselected. So now I'm going to select the France style because I have France selected here, and I'm going to go ahead and draw this feature. So I have it selected in my browser down here. I'm going to go to the Draw Features button, and there's two options. I can animate the feature along a path. Um, that's a really advanced feature. If I had a, a road mapped out, I could have um, I could apply a marker, and then I could have that marker animate along with the feature. But I'm just, just going to select Draw Feature. What I want to do now is I'm just going to turn off the visibility of my entire map. So now I have just France there. Let's zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to turn on um, some guides here so we can see the center. Now I can start to add these rivers. So that's why I had uh, this Chrome window up here that showed all the rivers. I pulled up the Wikipedia page just to quickly refer to what rivers are in France because when I pull this data set, it's going to be all the rivers of the world. I haven't yet figured out how to uh, pull just the rivers without you know, going uh, one at a time and typing them in that search online. I found it much easier just to download all the, the river data at once. I'm going to click uh, this Add button again, Download Features, and right down here, it says River Lines, Natural Earth Global Data Set. So I'm going to select that. It's going to automatically download it. And the reason I'm seeing them in the panel here is because this is selected. So all of them are selected. So what I need to do now is go back up to Filter. And I need to use the reference uh, image that I have here to start pulling those rivers from France. So first and foremost, let's grab the heavy hitters. Let's grab the Sen. So I'm going to type in Sen and then hit Enter. Now this is where my computer gets a little bogged down. It takes a little bit of time to filter these out. There we go. So I'm going to select it here. And once I select it, we see the element. Now I can just draw this feature. Oh, but first I need to select the style. So I don't want it to be tan. I want it to be that um, river blue. And I didn't name that. It just says new style. So I'm going to select it and select edit styles. And I need to rename it rivers of France. And I'll select, uh, I'll select apply. Now I'm going to draw this feature, and voila, I have my river there. It might be uh, just a little bit too. No, that looks like a good width. Like I said, there's a lot of curves in there, so if I make it too, um, too wide, it's gonna not look that great. Okay, so now I'm just going to repeat this process. I'm going to go grab the other rivers. So what do we got here? We have the Loire. Uh, be aware that sometimes, um, well, here's multiple data sets, so it can be a bit confusing because some of these can be a little bit different. You just need to click them and preview them to see which one's which. And what I think is going on here is we have, um, if I look at our reference image again, the Loire, it goes all the way down here. Now, I don't really know why there's two different pieces here. It might be because there's a lake. And because um, you can pull that data separately. So that might be the issue. So what I can do here, and hopefully this is going to work, I'm going to select these two. And since I have um, individual layers deselected, it's going to put these as shape elements, these two elements in one shape layer. So let's go ahead and do that. Draw features. OK, so there is that river. Um, now I want to grab this one. And this one is a good example of, um, if I type this in verbatim as I saw it on the map here, it's actually not uh, it's, it's not available in this, or they, I can't find it in it. So it wasn't downloaded with the standard rivers. There could be a couple reasons for that, that maybe I'm typing in the wrong name, maybe it's spelled slightly differently, or maybe it's just not in this data set. So what I can do is I can go up to this search bar up here, and I'm going to go ahead and type it up here. 
and see if it pops up. And there it is. It says it right here. It's got the name. It's got river. Now hopefully this will be good. Now there's a few different options here. These quick buttons. I can fit it automatically fit it to screen. I can add a label. I can draw it. I can add it to the browser. Why don't I just try to draw it straight from here? Let's see what happens. It'll download it. I've got my style selected. Okay, that worked. Let me just ma match it with this. Um, looks a little bit different. No, that looks right. Okay, so I have my rivers on here. Uh, now I want them to animate on. So I'm gonna have the rivers animating on as we do a slow zoom. I'll do the slow zoom at the end. So now we're gonna do the river. So let's start with the Rhone here. I'll just start with this one. So I'm gonna open this back up. It's got all these pieces and parts, but to animate it, I'm gonna click on this add button. And now I'm gonna select the trim paths animator. That adds that to the path. Now I simply need to animate the end attribute um, from zero to 100, and that'll make the river animate on. So I need to, uh, go to my endpoint so let's say we want it to animate over the course of like five seconds so i'm going to add a keyframe to the end and i'm going to go back to the one second mark or 15 frames so i don't know and we'll bring it to zero and now i'm going to scrub through here and see what happens i don't know if you can see the problem here but these pieces are animating separately here look at that so if we go down here and we change the trim multiple shapes and we set it to individual, let's see if that works. So I changed that to individual. It was set to simultaneous, meaning all the shape elements are going to trim paths simultaneously. Well, we want to do it individually. And luckily it's doing it kind of chronologically here. Make sure it's doing it right. And now what I can do, as long as I know that this is set up correctly, I can copy this trim paths. I have it selected here. And now I'm going to go and select all my other rivers, make sure I don't select France, and I'm going to just uh, paste. Oh, you know what? I made a big mistake because my playhead was over here. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go to the beginning, and now I'm going to paste. Now we have all these rivers animating. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems like a river would flow into an ocean. So these are all looking good, except for France borders with Spain at the bottom. So those are the mountains. So yeah, these all look like they're animating in the right direction. If they were not animating in the right direction, it's a simple fix. So let us let me show you one example. I could go to the Rhone, um, and I can open up the actual element here. And you see these. These are the um, path directions. So I could simply switch these. And that's just going to animate it on in the opposite direction, and, and problem solved. And now for the final touch, uh, I'm going to do our slow zoom. Now to do this, I can do this in the panel here. So we want to start off in this position. So I'm going to go to the zero mark. And I'm going to hit this keyframe button right here in the panel. And that's going to add keyframes to the main map comp. You can see it right here. It added keyframes to so latitude, longitude, zoom, bearing, blah, blah, blah. If I click on this and I go to the effect controls panel, uh, you can see all the, the camera controls here, the pitch. I could do like 3D if I want. Um, tons of options with this, with this program. Now I'm going to go to a little bit after five seconds. Um, and right in here, I'll just simply zoom in. And let's bring it way in, see what happens. OK, let's see what this looks like. OK, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to follow that affiliate link to check out more about GeoLayers version 3. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell because I'm probably going to be making more uh, tutorials about GeoLayers, maybe some more advanced tutorials. And if you want to check out my Monday Maps uh, playlist, a few times a month I, I animate maps just for fun. So be sure to go check that out, and I'll see you in the next one.